Welcome to Ladies in Tech with Lauren Deal and Kelly Mack, a show by women for women, breaking the IT stigma by empowering, inspiring, and highlighting ladies in tech. Let's join the ladies in the studio now for today's episode. Welcome to Ladies in Tech, where we empower women to rise within their tech careers or to inspire women to try tech careers. I'm your host, Lauren Deal, and I was a teacher for about 10 years. I am a TV host, and I'm also a tech enthusiast. Joined with me today is Kelly Mack. Hello, everyone. Um, I have a radio background and also a little bit of a tech background as well. Uh, matter of fact, I do a lot of digital marketing, social media management, and I just completed ITIL 4 Foundations, and I'm working on ITIL 4 or AMCS, which is cloud management. So that's been very interesting. I'm also joined over here by the one and only Sophie. Hey, Sophie. Hi, that's me. Uh, I'm Sophie. I'm a student at the University of Florida studying telecommunication. I'm also a radio producer and reporter for ESPN Gainesville, and I'm a host here at IT Pro TV as well. Uh, I've worked on courses with the lovely Don Pizzette, uh, LPIC, and I've also worked on essential digital skills, which was pretty interesting and a little more my speed. So I'm getting into the tech field as well, and it's been super fun so far. Today, Today we're going to talk a little bit more about different pathways you could get into that have to do with tech. When you think tech, you might think coding or something along those lines, and that is true, but there's a lot of other careers you could pursue as well. That's what we're going to discuss today. I'm excited. Let's get started. So we have a variety of jobs we're going to talk about today, but first off, we're going to talk about a couple of positions that maybe you've heard of, and maybe they're what you think when you think tech departments or tech-focused companies. The first position we're going to talk about is technical marketing and technical sales. And with this position, you need to have a lot of broad knowledge about tech or about what your company is all about, but you don't really need to have a, a particular depth of knowledge in one specific area. So it's more important that you have a broader knowledge. Uh, you'll need to know how your product works end-to-end -end in order to really thrive in this position, but you won't need to know the technical details of every single aspect of of that product or service. So we have somebody that works here with us. Her name's Katie Howard. She works in technical sales, but her position extends to marketing, and it is interwoven a lot with other departments and positions here at the company. Mm -hmm. So there comes that in that broad knowledge that's really important to this position. So right. we're gonna hear a couple words from her on what she does here. Hi, I am Katie. I'm the customer success team lead at IT Pro TV. The customer success team is part of the overarching sales department that I've been a part of for four years now. My background is in public relations, but a lot of my work has been in hospitality. So I've worked in a lot of bars and a lot of restaurants. I knew I wanted a public facing role, but I'm also very interested in IT and technology in general. So through networking, meeting people every single day and internships, I found this opportunity at IT Pro TV where I get to speak with IT leaders, IT team members, find out their pain points, how to solve them, and how to keep up to date with technology. So I absolutely love my role and I look forward to the future. Wow, that was pretty cool to hear yeah. some insight on what it is that Katie does here and what her position kind of entails. Yeah, and I love to hear about different roles, um, not only in tech, but just in general. Um, because a lot of times, you know, we think we want to do something and then we hear it, hear it and it's like, yeah, I can do that. And then sometimes it's like, no, maybe I need to look at something else. <laughs> well, it's neat to know that she works for a tech company, but right. she doesn't have to do the specific technical uh, daily activities. That instead she's bringing the product of the technical skills to people who need that skill. Mm -hmm. So really neat to hear from Katie. Yeah, especially when it comes to sales as well, because, you know, that's something I am always like, oh, sales, you know, but with her, hey, I'm only selling to who needs it. Exactly. So, that's great. Product, yeah. Well, another role is a project manager, and with this role, um, pretty much in a nutshell, you have to be able to be a multitasker. You right. know, you have to start a project from beginning to end. Of course, you need to have a strategic breadth, but at, uh, also at the same time, technical depth. Right. Um, and also, it's usually balanced somewhere between tactical and and strategical skills. So you got to be able to be hands on, but you also have to be a forward thinker as well. And That's to true. Be a manager. I mean, you're leading the people mm -hmm. and usually leading people with the technical skills. And so I'm sure that having some baseline of tech knowledge is really great to be able to lead others. So, mm -hmm. what a great uh, topic to touch on. Uh, the next one that we wanted to talk about is strategy consultant. And now, when you're thinking of strategy consulting, you're probably thinking of the consulting aspect, which is communication. Mm -hmm. um, but when you bring strategy into it, you have to figure that you need to have a, a big range of experience experience or expertise to be able to consult on different topics. Um, the nice thing about consulting is when you're finding a problem and able to work with a team and solve it, but when you're working with technical problems, you know, 
you might not think of that in a technical space, but that's something that every company technically has. So <laughs> I just said technically a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it's a tech show. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, of course, we have data analysis. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, Sophie? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you're like me, uh, I actually started in college as a business major. I ended up switching over, but I think a lot of people do go into college with the intention of, of having a business-related degree, and then maybe later on they decide they want to get more specific or kind of change paths. So there are some jobs at the kind of intersection of business and tech, and one of those would be a data analyst. For those of you that have skills like creative thinking and problem solving, as well as a mindset for data, not me, but a lot of people. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend's in data analysis, so there's definitely a market for it out there. You would utilize traditional business skills, but you also use uh, things like creative thinking and problem solving, as I said, and it also relies heavily on technical skills, so database and quantitative programming, machine learning, organizing big data. And when I say big data, um, I feel like I think big data and I think like big tech. Yeah. It's not what that is. Um, <laughs> it's sets that are too large or too complex to be dealt with by just regular data processing software. So right. that's what I mean when I say big data. Um, but that's kind of a job that's sort of at the inner section of business and tech. Um, we have a couple more that we can touch on as well. Definitely. Um, digital marketing. This is something that I've been doing for ever since I got on Facebook, I want to say in 2007. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was right after the MySpace era, which is probably yeah. a little bit before little your bit, time. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard stories. So the evolution yes. of tech. Yes. So with digital marketing, um, I actually love putting together digital marketing campaigns um, for various clients because they're able to come to me and they say, hey, this is the audience that I'm trying to reach. I want to reach people between this age range with this lifestyle and this is what I'm trying to sell to them or present to them. So I'm actually able to build a digital marketing campaign based on those analytics and that audience preference. And we just kind of go from there. So, you know, with uh, digital marketing, it does break down to data analysis, uh, statistical skills, marketing automation, Google Analytics, which, by the way, if you ever thought about learning, uh, Google University. It's free online and you can go get certified. And you can do SEO, data analytics, and all of that good stuff. And then, of course, social media is a huge part of digital marketing. If you've ever been on Facebook, Instagram, and you recently searched, like for me, I recently searched um, fitness club in the area. And then the next day, I start getting all of these different fitness programs and clubs <laughs> in my timeline. And because I know how it's, you know, the smartphone is using your information and your search is and they're selling it and then that's how they target you you know so that's all that is is digital marketing yes <laughs> and we actually have a clip from Missy Atkins who is our digital marketing here at ACI learning so let's hear from Missy hi I'm Missy and I'm a digital marketing manager at ACI learning in a nutshell as a digital marketing manager I oversee and implement all online paid advertising for our learning hubs Examples being I get to develop ad creative with our UX team, set up campaigns in various advertising platforms, develop strategies, do audience and keyword research, and analyze performances to determine ROI. I discovered digital marketing as a potential career path in college and I was at a networking event and I was actually connected with a female CEO of a marketing agency. She was in her mid-20s at the time and I remember being so inspired by her that I actually asked if I could intern with her that summer. And I'm very thankful that I did. I learned a lot and I ended up loving being able to develop strategies and work with data while still being able to be creative at the same time when it came to actually setting up the ads, graphics, and getting to think outside the box when it comes to marketing solutions. I worked with a lot of small businesses at the time and getting to know the business owners and the clients and getting to set up a plan to help their business grow and seeing the results, I fell in love with it. Funny enough, marketing was not my major. It was actually fashion merchandising. Um, but I did finish out my degree and test out a few other career paths along the way and then found my way back to marketing a few years later. So if I had any advice for women, regardless of industry, is to just be confident, stay inspired, and never lose sight of your passion. Um, keep pushing yourself to grow, keep networking, keep learning, and never be afraid to take chances because you never know where they're going to lead you. 
Thank you so much, Missy, for kind of just weighing in on what a day in the life may look like. Mm -hmm. uh, but Sophie, what is our next category that you want to talk about? Well, um, we do want to talk a little bit about web design. That's another job that might kind of be found at the intersection of business and tech. It calls on graphic design experience and coding skills. That can definitely help you. Um, you need project and graphic design skills. And you might also need some skills in like web design, Photoshop, Adobe Creative Suite. That doesn't hurt. I know I'm trying to get certified in the Adobe Creative Suite right now because <laughs> I tell you what, like in every single job, it seems like now that is a useful skill to have. It um, is, definitely. And then HTML5 as well is, is a useful skill to have for web design. Um, so that's kind of another job that's found at the intersection of business and tech. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some more jobs that if you are more of a creative or interpersonal type of person, there are some jobs in uh, the tech industry that might be right for you, such mm -hmm. as user experience designing. So uh, they're responsible for making digital products usable and effective. Mm -hmm. They are kind of like asking why certain parts exist and figuring out if it's necessary to the product, trying to make it as simple as possible for the user, considering all different kinds of users, different abled users, um, different devices they might be using. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a user-centric role and it requires some insight into the psychology of whatever consumer you're marketing to. Mm -hmm. We actually have somebody who's a user experience design here on our team. Uh, she's gonna give us a couple of words on what a day in her life is like. Hi, I'm Erin Seegers and I'm a user experience developer at ACI Learning. User experience is the overall experience of a person using a product. For ACI Learning, that means that my team works to create a seamless, positive user experience from website engagement to product engagement. Our first step is always to understand and empathize with the user. We gather data to drive design decisions, first creating a wireframe that helps us understand the user flow and where to put certain elements on a page. And then we turn that into a high fidelity mockup or prototype. We run usability tests using tools like Userlytics to gain insight into if our design is meeting the needs of our users and the business. In some cases, my team also handles front-end development. Front-end development is not a requirement to become a UX UI designer. However, having an understanding of how web applications are built can be a bonus skill. We often help to bridge the gap between design and development. In large organizations, you'll see teams and roles split out into things like user research, UI design, usability testing, and development. In smaller organizations, you will see people taking on more than one role. One question that gets asked often is, what is the difference between UX and UI? User experience speaks to the brand story, the user engagement, and the overall usability, while user interface speaks to the layout and visual design, both equally important. I actually received my degree in marketing, but after working at a software company, I realized I had a passion for the tech industry and that technical skills were going to be a large driver in my success. I went back to school for web design and development and completed a development boot camp. I've learned so much through training and on the job, but the learning in the tech industry never ends, which keeps opportunities to grow endless. Getting started in UX UI design can be overwhelming, but there are many online courses available. The key to getting your foot in the door is to have a strong visual portfolio. You'll need to learn things like Adobe XD or Figma and follow a design thinking process. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test. The best advice is just to take the first small step and keep taking steps forward without looking back. More great insight, definitely. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. All right, so now we're going to talk about copywriter. And, you know, I've been seeing a lot of these jobs pop up lately on LinkedIn. And at first, you know, coming from a radio background, I always thought that a copywriter was what it pertains to radio. You write scripts all day right. for different clients, right. you know, and now a crap copywriting is part of an everyday thing when it comes to the digital world, you know, um, social media campaigns, digital campaigns, you have someone back there that is a certified copywriter, somebody writing the creative verbiage and making sure that they fine tune it in a way where it's not these long drawn out paragraphs because it's been proven that people like short sentences, short descriptions. So this person is in charge of scheduling social media posts, making sure that um, it's grammatically correct and that it's worded correctly. So you, you have to have somebody that's very, I guess you could say, um, not only tactical, but also practical and somebody that loves to just really go over the work over and over and over and over again. How many times have you written a social post and went back and revised it three or four times? Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and this is a job too, <laughs> where even, even when it comes to things like creating user manuals or writing product descriptions, right. it's something that you might not think about, but there's a lot of tech jargon that can come into play there. And mm -hmm. your job is to kind of make it simple and understandable for the consumer. There's a class that I took while yeah. I was in college 
that's called technical writing. I literally didn't think of it until you just mentioned like wow. copywriting, and I was like, I took a class in that. It was one of the favorite classes I took there, but the whole point was making it as simple as possible, making it as straightforward as possible. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I guess, kind of where that comes into play. Yeah, definitely. And with me taking ITIL 4 and uh, learning with our very own Chris Ward with IT Pro TV, you know, that's something that they talk about, the foundations. Like, you have to have your strategy and your plan, and it has to be well-written, well-communicated. Right. And, um, you know, this is a great skill to have for that as well. So, definitely, uh, account manager, another big one, Lauren. Tell us about it. About that. I, I didn't really anticipate that falling underneath the tech uh, field, but right. it does. Mm -hmm. Because my first thought is people person, outgoing, um, but at the same time, you need to be able to multitask and um, understand how your product works. Yes. So when you're thinking about a tech field, you need someone who can explain how the product works, looks for new opportunities to explain it, and to nurture and cultivate the relationships that you have built within your company. Right, um, right. So account manager is actually a very crucial role. Mm -hmm. And again, these are areas that I'm so glad that we're touching upon because Again, when we talk about tech roles, I immediately go to coding or uh, IT support. Like Sophie's mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, my mom definitely. She thinks like she thinks tech, she thinks coding. And right. I think that's what a lot of people think. Right. Definitely. But definitely. this is so much more broad. So that is what I have for our, our categories today. But um, I think maybe we should bring it to the lit tip of the week. And I think it will tie it all together. So for this week's Lit Tip, I actually found it while I was looking at different quizzes that you can take to kind of figure out what tech career might be right for you. Um, so last week I was looking into this. I know a lot of these quizzes, um, you have to be careful because you don't want to like put all your stock into them, but this one that I found is on thinkful.com. It's eight really simple questions and they're not like technical jargon questions. It's really simple like things that you're interested in, your personal skills, that kind of thing. And it will tell you at the end of it, hey, this might be a good career for you. This is something you might want to pursue if you're interested in tech. So like I said, it's eight simple questions. And if you go to their website and take this quiz, they then also offer a whole bunch of courses on things like user experience design, digital marketing, project management, some of the things that we talked about today in this episode. Um, so those are some courses that you can also take through Thinkful if you do this quiz, you find an option that you think might be right for you, and you want to kind of figure out what does this career require. And they also offer some courses on software engineering as well. Um, but if you do think that a career in tech might be right for you more on the actual technical side of things, like what my mom thinks when she thinks tech is just coding. So things like that. Um, we also offer some courses here through IT Pro TV that are certifications like in CompTIA A Plus and Security Plus. We have certifications like Kelly mentioned earlier in ITIL. We also have certifications in things like certified ethical hacking, which is pretty exciting to me. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. And we also offer business and networking courses too, which kind of ties in with some of the intrapersonal jobs that we talked about today. So right. ITProTV.com, Thinkful.com, definitely go on and try that quiz and that's our Lit Tip of the Week. Yeah, and it's a great one too because when I think about you know taking a quiz that will give me results that says, hey, these are your strengths, this is probably what would be great for you. You know, I think of, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but in case not, I used to be an EMS. I actually went to school to be an emergency medical technician. Oh, wow. And I didn't realize that that just was not going to be the career choice for me. I thought it would be fun and exciting. And I like the idea of 12 hour shifts because you work like one week, three, 12 hours, and then the next week, four. And, you know, so, anyways, you know, and then helping people yeah. until I got out into the field, mm -hmm. you know, and then it was like, oh, if I knew this, I probably wouldn't have wasted the time going to school, you know, to do this job. And, you know, this is actually telling you, hey, this is something you might be interested in and maybe this is something you won't be. Well, immediately so, I love that tip. EMS, I, my, I immediately thought of blood and I get a hangnail and yeah, I can't handle it. So that's why I was like, I, if you went into that field, I give you props for even trying. Yeah, but I did try. I think that this is such a great um, idea of figuring out what a hybrid career could look like. And having right. technical skills, like you said, getting certifications will never hurt you, especially because a lot of entry-level jobs, that's like a training period mm -hmm. that you need to know a very basic understanding of a lot of things that go on in the company. Definitely. In order to pivot or maybe rise to the position you want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, considering taking the quiz or checking out the IT Pro library, I know in my spare time, you can take it anywhere. Yeah. And so sometimes when I'm riding on the train somewhere, that's where I'm watching or... Um, 
just so easy to watch because it's on demand. So anyway, definitely <laughs> great. Oh, tip. and we have a Sophie. good course that you and I just uh, oh, finished. Yes, IT fundamentals. Yes, which is a course that touches on it, uh, almost everything IT. It's like a buffet. Of yeah, IT. yeah. And <laughs> then you know, watching it, there'll there'll be a light that goes off. This says ding 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 ding, <laughs> as my uh, co-host Chris Ward would say, <laughs> which is like, oh, I could do that. That's something that interests me. This would yeah. be fun. You know, so it also gives you uh, great resources as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. What a great lit tip. You know, something we love doing here on Lit, uh, we love to salute other women, women that are in the field doing it big. So let's go to Sophie for this week's Wow. That's our Woman of the Week. So in this episode, we spent a lot of time talking about careers that are in tech, but they intersect with other fields. And our woman of the week is no different. She's actually in law. She's involved in law. She's a lawyer. Her name is Meredith Martin Addy, but she specializes in cases that have to do with intellectual property, software, technology. She's a deeply experienced IP litigator. Her experience includes more than 80 federal district court cases and more than 100 appeals to the federal circuit. Uh, she got her MBA from the University of Chicago's Booth School, and she spends her time counseling high-profile companies in software, technology, biotech, and pharmaceutical industries. Her clients describe her as exceptionally skilled. Uh, she's able to talk about complex legal and technical issues, but put it in a way that lay people can understand and that jurors can understand, um, which in part depends on her training as an electrical engineer. So hmm. she has got a whole bunch of different skills. She's yeah. done a lot in her <laughs> life. Um, she knows the courts inside and out, and to me, that's that's wow. That is a woman of the week for sure. That is definitely a, a wow. Woman who wears a lot of hats, <laughs> yeah. but uses all of those skills mm -hmm. to power, be a powerhouse in uh, the courtroom. Which I, right. if I was looking for a legal counsel, uh, Meredith would be the kind of person I'm looking for. Someone who can right. communicate, but also knows all the technical skills. So right, wow. right, Absolutely. yeah. When I think of law, I think in, in tech, I, there's like no connection. <laughs> you're you're right. either working legal or tech, and for her to be able to bring them both together, amazing. Like she has to be really, really smart. Oh my. <laughs> Word. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think it's great to end our show with a motivational moment with Kelly Mack. So, Kelly, what's our quote this week? This week we're going to talk about change. we got to learn to embrace change and make the best of it. Many changes won't come easy, but that doesn't mean that they won't be possible, and it doesn't mean that they won't be worth it either. So don't be afraid of change. Well, I think that's such a great quote because there are so many opportunities where uh, change is forced upon us. Mm -hmm. And it's how, you know, that book of Who Moved My Cheese, mm -hmm. it's either uh, move with it and right. try to find uh, peace and happiness mm -hmm. or uh, keep going back to the old cheese and knowing it's not there. So yeah. I love that book. The quote is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You've got to embrace change and flow with it. What are your thoughts, Sophie? I would say working on viewing change, at least for me, working on viewing change not as an obstacle or as, ah, there's this change in my life and i got to figure out how to deal with it, but more as... I guess kind of a, a blessing or like, okay, this is great. Like this is a new opportunity. This is whether it's a new job opportunity, mm -hmm. whether it's a new, you know, education opportunity, whatever it may be. Um, just viewing it as something that's an opportunity rather than like a drag or an obstacle. Um, right. I know that it, even in the last year, I mean, I just started working here in this last year and mm -hmm. I had no idea this time last year that I'd be working here, but I love it. It's been my favorite job that I've had. So, mm -hmm. but it was a change. It was like, holy cow, there's this new thing and what am I going to do? But it was a blessing. So I think viewing change is a good thing and learning to embrace it, like you said. Yeah, life is about change, you know, everything. Yeah, <laughs> you know? opportunities and redirection and just embrace it. Yeah. Yes, in fact, we would love to have you join us on all social media platforms. We love to connect. And if you know a woman you'd love to highlight for our wow, please go over to Instagram or Twitter. Then that is a perfect place that you can actually nominate a woman and we can feature her on a future show. We're on Twitter. Instagram, YouTube, and pretty much anywhere else you can find on social. So make sure that you're connecting with us. And Sophie is fantastic with engaging and just having a conversation. So we'd love to hear from you about future topics. So make sure you join us. Thank you so much for joining this episode of Ladies in Tech. We'll see you next time. Till then.